Hey guys, this is John Milliard with Arizona Preps. I'm here with Gabe Proctor of Cienega High School and Adam Bernal at uh, Tucson High. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the upcoming Arizona Prep Showcase, uh, talk a little bit about how it was last year, last year uh, what the expectations are going into this one, uh, and just talk a little bit about the seasons that these two teams had. Um, so we're going to start with Gabe, Gabe Proctor out of Cienega High School. He's a senior. Uh, Gabe, just kind of tell us about Cienega's season. Uh, what you enjoyed most, what you're going to miss the most because, you know, you're graduating this year. Um, and how it was to play in the Open. You guys played Perry, who became the, the first ever Open Division champions. Yeah. Um, and then you guys made it pretty far in the 5A state playoffs. Yeah. So kind of run us through your guys' seasons uh, and what, what, how it went. Uh, you know, we had a good season. Uh, there was a lot of ups and downs, but the thing I really loved about the season was probably playing like kind of the top teams like Perry and you know, going to travel to Camp Verde and all that other stuff, like being with the team, you know, I, I love those guys, you know, those guys are my brothers and stuff like that. So just being with them and, you know, being able to bond with them and winning a lot w was a good experience. And one of the things I'm going to miss is definitely uh, the home games, the student sections and everything that, you know, all the themes they did and stuff like that. And, you know, going to the open division, playing Perry and being going far was a good experience. You know, not a lot of people in Tucson do that. So, I mean, like, you know, it was a good experience playing co P, playing, you know, with those top guys in Arizona. So, you know, it was a good experience. You know, so so now, now getting a chance to play players like Cody Williams and co P, you kind of got to see, you know, two of the top players in the nation mm -hmm. um, in their respective classes. How was it playing against players with those kind of mindsets and those abilities? Like I said, because in Tucson, you don't really get to play against players like that ever. Yeah. Um, so kind of how, how was it playing against that kind of competition? I think it was good. I think it was humbling for, for me, you know, seeing, you know, playing against some guy like that. You know, he's very skilled for somebody his age and very big and strong. So, you know, playing against guys like that really uh, betters me and sees, you know, what I need to work on to get to the next level. And, yeah, pretty much that's, like, all I got. Nice. Uh, we're going to shift things over to Adam Bernal. Uh, same thing, you know, Tucson High was another team in Arizona that got to play in the – in Tucson, they got to play in the Open Division. Um, tell us a little bit about who you played, what the competition was like, um, and just how your guys' season went and how it kind of got there to that point. Mm, our season wasn't what we expected it to be, but it is what it is. We'll come back next year. Um, we played some in the open division. We played Liberty High School. They're very linky, very tall. We started off slow in the first half, came back in the second half. It was too late by then. Uh, I'm gonna miss one thing. I'm gonna miss is the, um, the locker rooms right before the game, messing around with the team, the, the practices, always being competitive, things of that nature. The bonds I created each each and um, each and every teammate. That's all I really have to say. So now, who who do you guys end up playing in the open division, the first round? We played Liberty. Liberty. How how was that? How are they? It was, it was a loud student section. Um, everyone's in your ear. They're very linky. A couple D one players. It was very humbling, but we matched up pretty well. Nice. And uh, who'd you guys face in the 6A playoffs? Uh, we played against Gilbert, but we had a couple players out, a couple of starters injured. That threw us off. Yeah. Nice. Well, it was a great experience. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the off seasons because the, these two programs were Siena and Tucson High were programs that I constantly said were doing things the right way as far as how are they preparing for the upcoming season. Uh, and Tucson High, your guys' journey started what two like two years ago probably. Um, Coach Langford had you guys playing together and, and just building the chemistry. Kind of tell us how that went, what what he kind of told you guys, what he was building when he took over the program, um, and what it's done up to this point now. On the first day of offseason, he told us if we believe in him, it'll pay off during the season, each and every day, just practicing a couple hours every day, um, listening to what he says, not not doing what we want, but doing what he wants, uh, playoffs, um, in the in the season, off season, practices, yeah, just listening to what he says and practicing. Nice. And uh, what was his message uh, after that Gilbert loss? He said he told us that we should listen to him. We were doing what we want during that game. If we would have listened, it would have been a different outcome. Nice. I think a lot of coaches kind of say the similar thing. I think I said that this last weekend actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and Gabe, so what 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 Siena do uh, this off season? This you know before this season, yeah. Uh, what do you guys do to prepare for this season? Because like I said, it was it was very similar what Tucson High and Siena both did. 
Yeah, we played a lot over the off season. We played together a lot. We played a lot of tournaments, and you know we got to do a lot of stuff together. We worked out all that. You know we got to practice. We pretty much were with each other twenty four seven. You know we never had like a day that we weren't with each other. So just being together and going to play like in Phoenix and doing all that other stuff and uh, really made us better for the for the season. That's all we did off season. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Two two programs did really great this year. Um, what's uh, what's Siena looking like going forward? How are they in the hands of Coach Apodaca, who I thought did a tremendous job this year? They're in good hands. I know they're in good hands. Apodaca's a great coach. You know, he knows what he's doing. And, you know, we got somebody like Coach Chris. You know, Coach Chris is like, you know, one of those guys that he's a mentor. You know, he'll get you through whatever, you know. If you're ever having a bad day, you know, he's always there for you, you know. So having them both is really just a blessing for anybody moving up. And I think they're going to be good next season. They'll have some rebuilding to do, losing a lot of seniors, but they'll be they'll be good. That's good. And you guys, you guys definitely set a great foundation, a great standard for – What's expected over there at Cienega? Um and Adam, what's what's Tucson High looking like going forward? Um, I, I think we'll be I think we we'll do pretty good this coming season. Um, during this off season, we're doing a lot of um, one on one work. With coach Langford, he's a very good coach. He played pro ball for thirteen years overseas, and he's just giving us little it's and bits of the game, help us um, progress as players. Nice. Yeah, I've, I've said it to him. I've said it to other coaches. I'm a big fan of what, what Coach Langford is doing over there. I mean, I post it on social media quite a bit. Um, now we just got to get over that that the home. first home playoff loss because the same thing happened to them last year. Back to back years. Um, so I think this this next year will, things will change with that. Uh, so let, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit now about last year's showcase, um, which was kind of the foundation for what we're trying to build here in Southern Arizona. Uh, we're trying to get these kids exposure. We're trying to get the colleges to take notice on what's going down uh, going on down here in Tucson. Because uh, I believe, I strongly believe that there's a lot of athletes here that are overlooked um, because of Phoenix, whatever it is. Coaches just don't want to come out here. Um, but things are are slowly changing. I think we've, we're have we seeing that from September of last year when we had our first event. Uh, Pima, you know, they, they did their, their due diligence and came out, uh, which is good. I, I love to see the community colleges support the community and, and, and go look at the kids that are in their community. Um, so it was good to have Pima men's basketball out there last year. Uh, so from having one college, one men's college, and then we had one women's college program uh, that recruited out of last year's event, we only had about 55 participants. Uh, and it was I thought it was pretty challenging. I thought we had some of the best athletes in Southern Arizona. Uh, what were your thoughts, Adam, last year? Because you, you, that was kind of your first varsity season, I think. Yeah. Um, so it was your first experience playing that kind of, kind of um, talent. Uh, so how, how was the showcase last year? What were what were you expecting when you went into it? And what were your thoughts after the event? Mm, I've never really been to a showcase before, but it was good to see how I matched up against other of the other top guards in Tucson and Southern Arizona, see what's around in Tucson and Arizona and how everyone plays. Now what were what was your mindset kind of going into it? Were you intimidated at first? Were you kind of just like, you know what, I'm just here to show these guys what I'm about? What was it like for you? Like what was, you know? I was a little nervous at first, but in the, the day it's basketball, so I just did what I do best, um, play defense, locked up, yeah. Gabe, uh, a little more experience on the varsity side of things. You were actually voted one of the top performers uh, in the September showcase. Uh, what were your thoughts kind of on the performance there, and what would you like to see change going forward? What would you do to improve that type of event? I thought it was a, it was a good event. You know, I really liked it. You know, the experience was Incredible, you know, having a lot of the guys that like I've probably never seen, you know, a lot of good talent and stuff like that. So playing against those guys, you know, made me better and made me like realize like what I need to work on to, you know, keep going and like have a better season. So it kind of like opened up, like it showed my strengths and weaknesses definitely. And something I want to see ne- uh, this this coming up showcase is probably like just just yeah more people coming down. Like I've seen some people coming from Phoenix and it's getting more you know uh, popular now. You know. It, there's going to be more people than it was last year. So just proving, like, you know, why I was a top performer last year, you know, coming back and try to do it again. So, Because yeah, you, you, know, you were able to prove yourself with 55 guys in attendance. We've doubled that now. We have 110 participants this year, or this spring. Um, a lot of, you know, 6A, we, all over. We have 1A, 2A, 3A, um, all the kids that could play at any kind of level. Um what are you looking like? What do you What do you expect from the small ball guys? Those those one A to three A guys. What are you guys 
expectations are you guys because I know a lot of big schools when you guys do play oh you think of like 3A you're like oh Palo Verde but then you get there and you realize those boys bring the heat like what's your mindset going in against guys like that just my mindset is being as scrappy as they are because those small schools like they'll, they'll get at you you know what I'm saying like they'll you know do whatever it takes to win and you know basically like try to outperform you so going into that you know I'm trying to you know match their energy like top it a little bit you know what I'm saying so I don't want them to outwork me and you know that's pretty much it so. and Adam just kill everybody 1A 2A 3A 4A it don't matter um, everyone's gonna come here out, come out and perform everyone wants to bust your ass sorry for the language <laughs> mm, yeah I just I perform everyone nice I like it man um, so now we like I said we doubled pretty much doubled the competition um, we got a new location this year. Uh, Coach Smith at Palo Verde is doing, you know, a good thing, I think, by letting us bring this event to Palo Verde. Um, we have five confirmed colleges that will be in attendance. Does that does that guy kind of get you guys excited? Does it light a fire under you guys? Yeah, definitely, because I feel like I'm overlooked a lot. You mm -hmm. know, being in Tucson and being at San Diego, I feel like we're overlooked. So definitely be, them being there, I got to prove a point, you know, every time, especially even when they're, they're not there, just proving a point, whatever gym I'm in, whatever, wherever I'm at, you know, I feel like I got to prove a point. So, yeah, especially with them there, I got to show off what I can do and, you know, let them know, like, that, it, you know, Tucson isn't weak down here. You know, we, we do things like, you know, like everybody else and maybe a little better. Um, I say it's more motivation up, up, up in Phoenix and then um, up north, it's more college coaches, so it's more motivation to, show out and um, let everyone know that Tucson isn't to, to be messed around with. Nice. So what do you want to prove to, the, like, a, you know, you kind of just answered a little bit. What do you want to prove to these coaches uh, about what you guys got going on down here? Because, you know, coaches are going to coach and all that stuff. We're going to do what we do. But ultimately it's the performances that you guys put out on the floor that brings the, uh, the attention down here. Um, so what are you hoping to do in, at this event? Uh... I'm hoping to get more, you know, exposure to Tucson and try to, uh, uh, yeah, hoping to get more exposure to Tucson, have more people down here, you know, get more coaches down here, and basically, yeah, just put on a good performance, but, you know, show that, you know, everybody in Tucson, like, can hoop, everybody can hoop down here, everybody can, you know, everybody can go, you know, we're not, we're not like, you know, so, yeah. so we got Silas <clears throat> Arvisu from Mountain View joining us today. Uh, he just got done playing baseball, so <laughs> forgive yeah, his, my bad. his looks. <laughs> <laughs> so Silas, tell, you know, we kind of catch up with these boys. We kind of talked a little bit about their seasons this last, uh, this past basketball season, and a little bit of what went into getting ready for that season. Um, so kind of backtrack a little bit. Tell us a little bit about Mountain View season. Um, what it was like, you know, what you're gonna miss about it, you know, being a senior and and kind of all that that went into it. Um, but what you enjoyed about, you know, not only the season, but your career uh, there at Mountain View? Um, it was definitely a roller coaster for sure. Um, I remember like the start, you know, we only had a couple of seniors, but I think I had a big role to step up this year because um, a lot of seniors left last year and it was just a whole, I, I, we need to change it around a whole new culture, a culture because last year it was kind of up and down. I didn't really want that for us, us seniors going out. We started off really strong. Um, it was definitely really good, but then we kind of hit, you know, kind of hit bottom, but we didn't give up. We, you know, we kept competing with a lot of teams, a lot of great teams like Cienega, Ironwood Ridge, all those guys. Um, but I think the most important thing I've learned in my career was definitely taking coaching. Um, it helped me a lot being a better player and just helped my game a lot more. Now, what are you going to, what are you going to miss the most about not only being, you know, playing high school basketball, but being a leader of a team and, and having a, being a guy that kids looked up to? Definitely the brotherhood. I definitely like being with the guys since August so all the way the whole season until it's over. Definitely like building the chemistry with the guys, you know, hanging out with them, you know, all the good times, eating after games and stuff, bus rides. I saw that, all the good stuff, you know. We are, we're all tight, but that's what I want to miss the most. And uh, during the offseason, you actually had a chance to do something really special. Uh, you played with the Arizona Warriors. And they actually won the the Native American National Champion. Yeah. I think I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. Uh, so you guys won the Native American National Championship. Uh, what was that feeling like? Because playing club basketball and then playing for what the Warriors teach you, and and they go in depth mm -hmm. into your guys's culture and everything yeah. like that. Um, 
how meaningful was that to to win that with those with that group of guys? It was an experience, you know, something that I would never forget in my life. You know, um, it was it's a lot different. You know, just playing a bunch of Native American teams that you know they can play. You know, they 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 have a different style that they they use, and you know people use it as a term, right? People oh they just shoot threes and put and play around the ball, but it's 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 different when you get in there on the court and actually play because you know it's a whole different a different like scheme. Mm-hmm. You know, I stole the tempo a lot. But, yeah, I mean, we have a chance to go back to back this year. So that's where, you know, that's where our main focus is. And there's only 12 players that have been able to call each other back to back champs. And all those 12 players have been Warriors. There you so. go. That's good stuff, man. Coach is doing a great, great thing over there with that program. Uh, Sienna, you guys, you guys have all played each other, right? Yeah. So who, who's the top dog in this room right now? Me. It's got to be me. It's not. Hell no, it's just gotta be me. Sorry. It's gotta be. Who 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 won? Who 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 won over here? Tucson. Who, yeah. who won over here? Tucson. Like, Tucson. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nah, you guys are all you guys are all had great seasons. Um, so let's kind of talk about the expectations going into, like I said, into this this year. Um, so what's something last year gave that you experienced that? You like that you want to see again this year, but what what what, what do you really want to see happen different this year that you didn't see at last year's event? Something that I want to see different this year is probably um, probably we have more the kids, more kids coming in, more fans, more fans, and more of the people showing up, more of the community showing up. You know, supporting us. You know, because there wasn't a lot of people in the stands last year. There was mm-hmm. a decent amount, but I want to see like the whole community come to come, come together and. You know, watch us showcase our talents. You know, so and let them know like what they're what we're doing out here is important. You know, yeah, trying to get to college. I think that's the that's the one thing. You know, everybody's saying that we don't have the the talent that Phoenix has, but I think you kind of touched the point right there. We don't have the kind of support some of those Phoenix programs have, because um, when you guys walk went up there playing playoff games or even just away games up in Phoenix, packed house. Their part, you know, the bleachers weren't half empty. The student section wasn't only three rows. It was like an entire entire set of bleachers that was full with the student section so the the atmosphere everything's crazy um but no i agree i think the community you know needs to be a little supportive and, and coach kane at ironwood kind of talked about this at our ironwood ridge banquet in kentucky you know basketball where he's from basketball is just crazy you know it's it's, it's you have people that graduated 20 years ago going back to those high school games every year just every game every home game is full packed but you don't kind of see that down here in in, in Tucson, um, so I think once we have the backing of the community, then things start really the magic happens. Um, Adam, again, same question that I asked Gabe, what are your what do you want to see different at this event that you didn't see last year? Uh, I'll say the same thing that Gabe said, just uh, more fans. Last year it was just a couple parents here and there, a couple clapping, a uh, couple claps, but it'd be better if you know more 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 parents, more of the community was out and supporting mm-hmm. us. And uh, uh, Silas, kind of a similar question. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tweak it just a little bit, though. This kind of being your last, like, and Gabe, too, your last time playing with the Tucson community, um, what do you want to see? Um, Definitely challenging each other. Probably, you know, it's our last time, like, playing, like, in the same gym, unless we play club. But, like, together, I'm definitely challenging each other, like, you know, push each other to the limits and... See what see what happens. Yeah. So so I I personally I want to see a dunk contest, man. <laughs> you know that, we didn't do that last year. Um, I want to see a dunk contest. We already got the top twenty uh, that are going to play in an all star like all star type competition. Uh, but the top twenty are going to play the final game of the day. Uh, One hundred and ten kids are, are playing a three point contest. <laughs> see if we can <laughs> see if we can get a three point contest in there. Because um, well, at least these two guys can shoot the ball pretty pretty well. <laughs> Gabe's more of a facilitator. Oh my gosh! Oh my God. <laughs> and that's and that's quoting Gabe. <laughs> why you lying on my name? Why you lying on my name? <laughs> and uh, I don't think Silas. Uh, so what does it mean to you? Like I said last year, we only had one men's basketball coach actually in the in the house in mm-hmm. in, in attendance. Uh, this year, right now, as of right now, we have six committed coaches um, that will be at the event talking to players. Mm-hmm doing their thing recruiting and hopefully signing some of the guys here in Tucson. Uh, what does that kind of mean to you? Because, like I said, you seniors, 
this is because of your guys' performance. You know, what you guys have done this season, they're kind of starting to take notice, like something's going on down there. Uh, what does it mean to you to kind of leave these guys with at least that impression and feeling going forward? Um, it just shows that we can play. You know, it shows that we're not just a Tucson team or Tucson teams that, you know, Phoenix teams come down here and, you know, smack smack us. But, no, we can play. You know, we have talent, and they, they need to see that we do. So it should – it helps like other guys like juniors and sophomores out that you know it shows that as long as you work hard that people will find you. You just have to find the right connections and go from there. So I'm gonna kind of pull up the list <coughs> of uh, participants that we're gonna be having this year. Uh, Silas, you're, you're teamed up. We'll talk about you because you're the first team that popped up. Mm -hmm. um, so the the rosters will change a little bit because people do drop out last minute. Some additions. Uh, we got to tweak, you know, people around just mm -hmm. to kind of even things out a little bit. Um, what usually happens is all the alternates that come that are listed kind of come in and fill in those spots. Got you. But as of right now, you have um, it's you, Mason Tippett out of Sienega, Weston Habig out of Sabino, Isaiah Berg, Micah Mountain, Nick Pons uh, from Saguaro. Uh, we had to get somebody in there for Will Dixon. He he had an injury that's going to keep him out of this. Uh, Devin Antone out of Bobo, uh, Isaiah Hill out of Pueblo, Cam Pippen out of Paul Verde, and then Noah McKinney, who was surprisingly the eighth grader last last time we had this event, was kind of an MVP performance last year uh, as an eighth grader against his other high school guys. Who excites you the most that you haven't had a chance to play with, to team up with? Definitely, um, definitely Isaiah Hill, for sure. Um, you know, we did run it back in middle school. Well, that was the middle school days at Miranda Middle. But, you know, I feel like I can feed off his energy. You know, he's a, he's a great attacker, a great scorer. But, you know, I consider myself as a, sh a shooter. So I'm, I know he can find me in an open spot. So I feel like that would be a good duo. And you guys both both are really probably top top in your guys' classes at what you guys do defensively. Uh, Isaiah's really good at stealing the ball, really good at his rebounding. Uh but you have a talent that kind of goes unnoticed in your charge-taking ability. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be exciting to see kind of those things pair up. And I'm excited for the matchups. But, hey, don't sleep on the lobs, though. Mason, <laughs> I'll throw you one. All right, and then we're going to check a look at the Lumberjacks, Adam Bernal. So this is your squad, Adam. You got Vince Edwards out of Gregory. Uh, we just had a Cole Vernon pull out, so he'll, he'll be getting a sub. Your teammate, Khalil O'Bannon. You got Tony Giza out of Salmon Wall, who's I kind of talked to you a little bit, a very athletic kid. Um, yourself, you got Yak out of Pueblo, Xander Werner for the Wolves, uh, Rich Knott out of Tanker Verde, Josh Max from Catalina Foothills, and then uh, we just replaced Gabriel Coronado, who uh, had a pull out too. Who on that list excites you about teaming up with? Mm, besides my old teammate Khalil, I'd probably say Xander Werner. And why, um, why is that? He can score on all three levels, uh, he's a big, so. Run that pick and roll from Lobs. Find me, I'll find him. I don't sleep on Xander by calling him a big man. This kid yeah. can dribble, we drive. Uh, definitely one of the top sophomore prospects, you know, not just in Tucson, but the state, state. of Arizona. Yeah. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Gabe. Gabe Proctor on the Apaches. So if you guys kind of got the theme that we named all of our teams after the colleges yeah. here in Arizona. Uh, you got Gabe Proctor, DeAndre Hawthorne out of Buena. Kevin Quintero out of Ampi, Isaiah Aguiar out of uh, Saguaro, Brandon Policoser out of Centennial, Mason Hoke, or sorry, Greenway, I think it is, for Brandon Policoser. Uh, Mason Hoke out of Push Ridge, Quentin Raglan out of Tucson High, Carter Brown out of Ironwood, Tate Alberts out of Catalina Foothills, and really good freshman, Isaac McNair out of Morana. Oh, yeah. um, who kind of, who are you excited to play with on that squad? Uh... Probably Isaac McNair. You know, he's a he's a younger guy. So, I mean, younger guys usually, like, they try to show, like, you know, that they can hoop with the older guys, that they can go, they can play with, like, you know, the older talent and compete. So, definitely him. I know he's going to be a dog on the court. I played against him. He's he's good on the court. How do, how do you do against you guys when you go to Sienega played Miranda? I mean, he, he did good. He didn't do a lot, but he did. Yeah. It was his first game, so, I mean. He made himself a little notice, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, be, other than who's on your team – and who's in this room, who do you think was the best overall player varsity in Tucson this year? Overall player? Yeah. That's not on your team. That's not on my team. And not in this room. 
I gotta give it to uh, Dejan Cia. Why was that? Because I don't like. Oh, it was supposed to be my team or any team. No, I, any, I, team? any team. I don't know. He's he's a little shifty guard. You know, he can do it all. Really, he can shoot. You know, he can drive. I, like just playing against him, like seeing how he plays. Like I just like the way he plays. He's, he's good. He's short. You know, he's a he's short guy, but he still you know gets after. He still can put you know put the ball in the basket on all three levels, mid range, everything. So I think he's probably like one of the top guys. I believe. Is he the top guy though, in your opinion, in Southern Arizona? Oh, the top guy. Yeah, who who would you if you had to give MVP of of the season to somebody in Southern Arizona? Who would it have been? Any level, any level, any level, like any level as in one A through six A. I'm trying to think, who can I give it to? Who can I give it to? Probably. Uh, can it be on my team? My team. No, can't be, can be on Siena. Uh. I don't know. That's a hard question. There's a lot of good guys. I can't. Give me one name, man. You got. You have to name somebody right now. Have to name somebody right now. Yeah. Probably. Uh. Come back to me. Come back. All to right. Me. Go to the good name. Do you guys have somebody in mind? Uh, is, is Bobo there? At any level. Is, Southern, is any, Bobo Southern there? Yeah, they're one. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm making sure. Yeah. So who Silas, who would you uh you who's your MVP of the year? One A through six A. I gotta give it to Devin Anton out of Babo. What they what they what Bobo well, I might say this wrong. That's what we all say Babo. Mm. Bobo Kaveri. Bobo Kiri. Bobo Kiri. Bobo Kiri. Uh what they did this year was special, man. At any level. They were they were not expected to do anything special, especially after last season. They were one of the bottom one A teams. Uh COVID kind of hit that program pretty, pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to come in and go all the way to the one day state t- championship game, and and they did they actually performed they better than everybody thought they would. Um, but yeah, what what about Devin makes him so special? He's just I mean he's just great all around. I mean I mean he can score. I mean don't sleep on his shooting because you know he'll knock the shots down. But his I think his defense. But most importantly, what I like a- about him is his rebounds. I mean he just he snatches them. He's not that tall. I think he's like six foot, six one. Yeah, he's like but six he's foot, yeah. he's not that tall. But I mean, once he gets those rebounds, he pushes the ball. And even look at, look for him though. I mean, he leaks out. He leaks out on the right times, and he'll you find him for an open layup. That's Adam, MVP of the season. Mm-hmm. You got to pick. You have to pick one player. Who is it? I have to go with Isaiah Hill. What he averaged twenty four seven to five. I don't know, but the kid was <laughs> a monster. Right? Yeah, a thousand point club as a junior. Shoot the ball, facilitator, lock you up on defense. Yeah, yeah. I have to give it to him. Yeah, definitely. That that's kind of I've had these discussions with other scouts, and we we've kind of talked about who we would have picked. Um, Isaiah Hill was was probably definitely my pick. Actually, um, it was close. You know, there was you had Masai Dean who had a tremendous season, yeah. uh, Cisco Yamas who had a great freshman season, um, but what Isaiah Hill did with the team, they were kind of missing a couple of their guys because of the transfer sit down rules. Um, but Isaiah still powered them through that. Um, had a really bad game against CDO where they almost lost that one, and that would have really damaged some things. But when it comes down to it, nobody I don't I don't really think there was anybody more clutch than him because he always hit I don't know how many buzzer beaters he had this year, but it was just like watching it on repeat. It just happened over and over and over again. Um, now, who are you guys most excited to compete against? What who, like? This season, like in the showcase, who who's one guy that that if you want to perform in front of college coaches, who's one guy that you want to guard because he's going to give you the best look? Now that's kind of a different different. It's different than the MVP now. So who's going to challenge you the most? Who's going to push you the most? But who who do you want to make a play against that you feel will make a statement? <laughs> Honestly, um, to play against probably um, Braden Gant. Yeah, like Coolidge, huh? Yeah, Coolidge. I, I, um, we played against each other last year, uh, during the summer, and we kind of went at it a little bit, but definitely Braden Gant. I've seen him on timeout for a little bit, and you know, I, I feel like he would give me the, the best challenge. You know, I, I like the way he played. You know, he's a, you know, three level scorer, play defense. You know, I like his cockiness. I like it. So, I probably him. And Adam, who's who, I don't know if you've seen the list of players or not yet, but who's somebody that you're, you you want to go out there and make a play against? Not necessarily calling them out, yeah. but because they're that great of a competitor that they're going to, that making a play against them 
kind of signifies it? Like it's worth, hey, that kid might be something. Um, I'd have to go with Sidine or um, Isaiah Hill. They're two of the um, best guards in Tucson. Even in the state, I would say. Um, it'd be fun to match up with them. Nice. And Silas? Um, either Ajan or DeAndre. And I feel like they're the most quickest guards in southern Arizona. So I think it, it could show if I could play defense. Awesome. And have, have you, any of you guys decided on colleges? Are you guys looking at anything right now? Or are you kind of hoping that something might come from this? Um, maybe get film and, and send it out somewhere? Yeah, not decided yet. Where, where, where would you like to go to school? Um, if you had to, like, here in Arizona, do you want to kind of travel? I want to um, travel. I love Arizona, like, don't get me wrong, but I like to travel. So go somewhere else that, you know, the culture is different. So, but yeah. Any state in mind? Maryland. 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 Yeah. That's where my pop's from. So, Maryland. It's different. I like Maryland, yeah. And Adam, you know, you still got another year. You're a junior. You'll probably be one of the top top senior guards next year. Um, at least that's my thinking right now. Um, that's what I've been telling everybody. <laughs> so don't let me down on that one. <laughs> um, what, what's your plans? Are you, you Have you started, you know, looking at schools? Have you started putting film together to send out to coaches? Uh, I know you, your dad does a great job at a training. Um, which if you guys don't know, Bernal Fitness, man. Give them a look, kids, youth. They do a tremendous job with everything that they do over there. And this kid's a perfect product of what they what they've done and what they how they develop kids. Um what's what's kind of your thought, your plans on that? Um uh, use this off season to gather footage and send it out to coaches. I don't really have any colleges in mind or where I want to go, but this off season's been too big for me. I love it, love it. And Seth? Um I don't have any like interest right now, but like if I had to pick like a top three, it would either be um, Fort Lewis and Colorado, uh, and then definitely probably um, Zay school that he went to. He likes the Fort Lewis comment. Dude. Is he? Uh, yeah. What's Zay? Zay, where do you go to? Coaches. 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 Yeah. Coaches for sure. I mean, they they had a crazy season this year, and then you know probably like an Opima, just somewhere to stay home. And for like he mentioned Cochise, if you guys don't know about my boys down at Cochise, man, yeah. they broke the record for the most consecutive wins at a D1 JUCO. I think they had like 27, I think it was, or something like that. Um, Coach Carrillo does a great job down there uh, developing those players. So much love to Cochise, and I think actually Cochise will be one of the colleges in attendance, um, one of the top JUCOs in the country. So you guys, you know, the the colleges are there. Um, and the, the opportunities to get a, get some of your education paid for are there. Uh, now it's just showtime. You know, yeah. you guys got to not talk about it and not be, you know, you got to be about it now and mm-hmm. go out there and perform. Um, any questions? Any any questions about the showcase? What were, Anything you want to know that went on behind the scenes or um, just anything in, in mind? Well, um, what do you think as players we should do at the showcase to get us a better opportunity? Uh... So most of you guys know, I know you and you know, I'm big on defense. Um, and I think just about every other coach is, is looking for somebody that's not just a pure scorer. Um, because the reality is most kids aren't going to go into college and you're not going to be a top scorer right away. That's not what they're looking at. Uh, they want to see dogs. They want to see hustlers. They want to see you guys diving for loose balls. Even in a showcase event like this where it's kind of like you get that all-star feel, you, you think you're just there kind of like to have fun. Um, in my mind, just there having fun goes out the door when you see the college coaches sitting down watching you. Now, like I said, it's, it's perform, it's showtime. Um, defense, being the, being the loudest guy on the court, being the, the loudest teammate on the bench. Um, your guy takes a charge, you're the first one there picking him up. Um, smart decisions, uh, shooting the ball quickly, you know, not hesitating, not, being, not losing confidence on the floor. Uh, like I said, communicating again on the floor, just being a, you know, an encourager, just be a great teammate, being the teammate that you want uh, to have. Um, I want to chime in on this one too. Yeah, go ahead. So let, let me go ahead and ask this question. So you already have a list of the schools that will be there, right? Uh, some will, Some yeah. of them. Yeah. Okay. What is a good way for them to know or at least reach out to those college coaches before the showcase? Like, for instance, um, like, I don't know if it's a popular thing. I know with football, you use Twitter or whatever the case yeah. is. 
what social media or what things should they be doing to reach out so when those coaches actually go to the showcase, they actually kind of have like a heads up, like, hey, you know what? I already kind of know who that kid is. You reached out to me. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So we, we've we've announced two of the colleges that will be there uh, earlier this week. And if I had that mindset, like Chris just said, if I was a player, the first thing I would have done was, okay, Mesa Community College is going to be at the event. I'm going to look go to Mesa Community College, look up the school, do a little research on the coach, see where he's been, see where he's from, watch maybe watch a film uh, or two other games and see what kind of system he runs, and. Now you have something to talk to him about. You, you know, you can connect on where he's from, where he's been, um, the offense he runs, how he plays his guards, uh, how you think you could fit into that system. You know, and name a player. Hey, I'm, I'm, I play like blah, 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 you know, what, whoever. What social platform do they tend to use mostly? Twitter. I've, I've had the Twitter most success well? with Twitter. Yeah. Twitter as well? Twitter. Right yeah, on. Instagram's more, so Instagram's more high school, uh, highlight. Um, I mean, they're on there too, so, you know, because they, they, they do their due diligence and they actually look at kids' social medias when they're recruiting. Uh, so a lot of you middle fingers out there, man, clean that stuff up because... Right. <laughs> so, hey, so how many how many of the guys in here actually have uh, Twitter accounts? I got, I got one. I got one. How many of uh, y'all use it, though? I use it. I don't, yeah. I use it pretty free. Twitter? Twitter, yeah. Not Twitter. Is it set up right? Yeah. yeah, we we set games up correctly. Yeah, we, got it, yeah. we make sure of it. <laughs> and so for the, those of you kids that are going to be participating in the, in the showcase, let me know. Let me look at your Twitter. You know, I, I've done a lot of research on how college coaches want your uh, Twitter account set up, social media account set up. I'd love to help you guys set them up just to help your recruitment. Don't um, lie, you follow my page. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's that's the first thing I would have done, Chris, was I would have looked up the – didn't done my due diligence, research the coach, the program, the school, if they have what I'm looking for there. Um, if they don't have my what I want to go to and get an education in, I'm not going to waste my time or their time. Um, because here in, in Tucson, that's kind of our main focus is getting you guys to the education part of things. Mm -hmm. uh, very few guys are going to put in the work. I'm not saying that they don't have the potential, but they're going to put in the work to, to make something happen with the, with the sports that they choose to play. Um, and whether we all like it or not, I think we said this in one of the podcasts, it comes to an end someday, you know? Yeah. And the only thing left is that education that you went there for. Um, so yeah, do your research, kids. Look up the colleges, look up the coaches, connect with the coaches, make it personal, make it memorable. Um, and like I said, talk about the program, talk about the other offense they run, the defense, uh, what you like that they do, and what, what you feel like, hey coach, I, you know, why do you do this? You know, I just wanna know. Um, I just like hijacking your show, bro. <laughs> And email, email the coach. Like, like I said, Mesa was a, was one of the ones we announced. I don't think. I hope one, at least one kid reached out to Mesa, say, "Hey, I saw you're coming to Southern Arizona Showcase. I'll be playing. This is my team. The game times will be released soon. Um, here's here's some highlights that I have right now. Mm -hmm. Hope to see you there, Coach Neal." So I heard you asking. I heard you asking, like, who do you think was the best player y'all got? Can you play up and everything like that? So here's my question to you. You got an eighth grader, right? What, how do you convince an eighth grader to go to your school, your program? What is it that's so amazing about your school, your program, that you would encourage a kid to go to the school that you're currently at? At a college level? No, I'm talking about them, like their high school. You got to sell your high school to an eighth grader. Now he, and, I, and again, he's doing this figuratively because we don't recruit yeah. in high school. You know what, he, <laughs> we can't talk about it, but I can, I can do it all day long. But no, no, this is, to me it's like, why are you so proud? What what took you to, for instance, I got I got Mountain View, we got Tucson High, we got Sienega. What took you to those programs? What took me to my program was, you know, my uh, my brothers went to Sienega High School, and you know, I wanted to keep you know showing that you know we you know. But one of the things that kind of our weights coach, Coach Schween, uh I was really big on like trying to get you know faster, bigger, you know, stronger, and better condition. So amazing. So, you know, uh, having him there, that kind of brought me there as well. And uh, the old coach that was there brought me there. You know, he was a good guy. You know, I talked to him before. Like, he was a cool, cool dude, you know, Coach Tafavi, you know. He was a great guy. But, you know, seeing, like, their culture and how they – their fans and going to one of their games, like, kind of made me go there. And yeah. Now, are you from the Sienega neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't live okay, too far Okay, so, so it's your school. It's your community school. Okay. Yeah, it's my community school. All right, so Tucson High, tell me, man. 
Uh, for me, it was Coach Langford. I live on the south side, so my home school is Sunnyside and Desview. I went from Desview to Tucson High because of Coach Langford. Uh, the record was five and seven. I still went there. And the big thing for me is just player development. It's um, built off, built off twelve. It's not just one player, two players. It's the whole team. Everyone contributes, and that's what makes us better. All right, Mountain View. What 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 oh, brought yeah, you to yeah. Mountain View? Nah, what made you want to represent Mountain View? Um. So ever since I was little, I mean, I mean, after middle school games, I would go straight to Mountain View, um, because of the coach, uh, Coach Duck, Coach Corey Duck. You know, he's, you know, I love I love how he coaches the game. You know, it's not just a slap on. I mean, like he he gives it to you. I mean, he tells you straight up. He doesn't, you know, sheer coat anything. But you know, just I mean, just the kind of the pressure. You know, uh, he always tells us the the word the. Hardest position is the point guard position, and you know I just took I just took up took that challenge, and I think it made me a better person. What else you got, Coach Chris? Man, I'm trying, right? <laughs> I'm shooting no, fire. These, these are good, man. These are good. I'm trying. Um, I mean, do you guys feel that there needs to be a change when it comes to? the way the alignments are for the season or the games that you guys play during your season. Do you think that there should be some kind of different change where rather than seeing you guys play, for instance, you, say Sienega, right, or, or, or even Tucson High, both amazing programs for, for their regions or, or their, their divisions, yet you got, for instance, certain programs that don't – you know what I'm trying to say, John. Yep. They don't match up. Do you think that, that the AIA needs to step in and change something. And I know my man who can't even hear from Mountain View. Uh, um, it, it, like, do you guys think that there needs to be some of that? And, and please let him know what yeah. we're saying. So he, he's asking, um, do you think there needs to be a change in the alignment of the regions for basketball? And another thing I'll add in there, do you, like, even though football has their regions, I feel like basketball regions should be different. I, I feel like it should be different by sport. By sport. Well, and right. I, a, I think it should be yeah, by yeah, achievement, different. but yeah. Yeah. but like, but what are your guys' feels on? So what? As, what are you? What are your guys' thoughts? What are you asking on the on the alignments? Do they need to do a better job aligning the the regions yeah. uh, by competitiveness, by teams, and yeah. all that other stuff? So. Yeah, it makes it more competitive and more entertaining. You know, like because playing like you know, you know, uh, having you know schools that you may be way better than playing in their region. You know, it's I feel like you need to play like. More competitive teams in the region, and like not, you know, what I'm saying. Well, don't be afraid to call the programs out, man, because sometimes that that helps them. Like, shoot, we need to do a better job, man. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. This is what, what's being like, said. Yeah, like Desert View, like have been having them in our region. Like, it, it just doesn't line up with it. You know, it just doesn't make sense. You know, mm -hmm. to me, and like, you no know, Gallus, no Gallus, good program, but you know, it just it just doesn't line up. You know what I'm saying? But gotcha. Um, I would say the same thing. Like, there's no reason why we should put, we, we should be playing the same side two, three times out of the season. Uh, I said we should be playing more top teams in Tucson and four, five, six A and some of the better teams in Phoenix. That way when playoffs come around, uh, we're ready for them. We had a we had a pretty easy schedule the, the whole season and when playoffs came around it kinda bit us in the ass. Well like um, I mean per you know, perfect, I my perfect, perfect, a little, oh, my bad. perfect example, I see that you guys beat Desert View hundred and nine to twenty. Yeah. Like those are the kind of games that we need to I feel that we need to get away from. And I mean, it's not fun for either team. Yeah, and the AIA needs to realize that what programs are are in the rebuilding phase. You know, like we we've said it before, Desert Review. Right. They shouldn't be playing five A or four A. You know, it, yeah, they're a five A type of enrollment, but the kind of athletes they that are getting that are playing the programs. Right. They need to get some confidence. They need to get some time to build together. Um, and there's nothing wrong with I feel like letting them play a three A schedule or a two A schedule. Or at least some, you know, some some of those there's regular season games need to be those type of opponents to kind of see where they really are at, and then take that into consideration when you realign the divisions. Uh, but I'm gonna let Silas say his part because he's gonna my say something. Um, so uh, definitely my answers are different between these two because I mean our our region this year was definitely you know it was a toss up, um, you know Choya, uh, Mountain View, uh, Catalina Foothills, and Ironwood Ridge. You know, you know it, it kind of I felt like. It should have been like kind of spread out, like a little more, like you know, regular season games in between our conference games. But you know, it is what it is. But I think our our region was definitely probably one of the top best regions in Southern Arizona. Yeah, this one, ours, our region, because I coach at Ironwood, was definitely one of the most competitive overall regions. Mm -hmm. As long as the, as well as the, um, I think it's the 4A Kino. 
that little, you know, the one with Sal Points, the one oh, yeah. Pueblo, that was one, that one was a really good one to watch too. Um, but one of the most interesting things was uh, La Cienega and Buena sweating it out yeah. for the, the region title because, you know, it, it wasn't on their hands anymore. Yeah. It was now on the teams that they had played to see who's going to beat each other out in the end. And ultimately, Cienega won, like, got the region by, like, point zero something power points. Damn. Um, Damn. And it, I think <laughs> That's it, crazy. I think it came down to, like, the saguaro Cell Point game because one of them beat Cell Point, the other one beat Saguaro. Yeah. So it kind of came down to who was going to beat who. Um, so that was an interesting one to watch, but yeah, definitely the, our region was was really competitive. Um, what else you got, Chris? Man, you keep coming back to the well. Because well, I think <laughs> so. We're gonna. I think we're gonna close it up. Um, I want to give a shout out to Showtime uh, Cards, George Mares. Like I said, I, you know, I said it on my post. He does really great things for the the community. Mm. Um, sports cards are big, guys. Get involved. <laughs> We're gonna have some of the players at the showcase doing interviews. We're gonna be opening up packs, um, kind of showing them what the interest is and all that. Pokemon, comic books, they do it all over there. They got a great team of guys. Um, so it's ten dollars general admission for the showcase. You get half off your general admission if you bring in non-perishable food items. So we're also helping out the Tucson Family Food Project with this event. Um, so we're, you know, this event isn't all about making money. We're, we're doing a lot of things by giving back. So we're, we're starting it off, like I said, with the non-perishable food items, particularly uh, any pasta, olive oil, uh, canned vegetables. Um, so what the Tucson Family Food Project does is they, they create meals for kids, not only for the kids, but for the families. Um, they, I think I talked to Stephen Cotarobles, and they do about 135 families right now a weekend. Um, and they don't just give them meals, they give them meals that they have to take home and prepare for the family. So the kids get to learn how to cook it, they learn how to make it, they give them the ingredients and all that list. Um, so they're doing great things. We're also going to be helping out Positive Pros, which was uh, started by Coach Smith over at Palo Verde. It's a free league that they do for kids every Saturday. Um, if you, if you want to check that out, Positive Pros. Uh, and then we're also going to be helping the Palo Verde Athletic uh, boys and girls basketball teams. Um, so like I said, it's all about helping the community and, and getting things done out there. Um, again, thank you for Showtime Cards. Sponsoring the, the 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 event, you guys got anything you want to say? Oh yeah, my, my MVP was Devin Antoine too. Bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, Devin Antoine got it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I was like watching him, bro. He was, yeah. You don't want to say hi to bro? To hi my, to anybody? To my girl. Hey. <laughs> hey, when it's when it's over, with, you feel me? Wait, that's, that's all I gotta say. Hey, so where are you taking me out to eat though? Hey, uh, why why didn't you drop a name? Why not drop a name? <laughs> Because I can't, I can't speak on it. I can't speak on it. Because they each are like, going to think it's to them. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> You're messing up my business right now, man. You're messing up my business. The fact that you're playing into it's messing up the business. All right. Uh, you got anything you want to say? Anybody you want to shout out? No? No. Silas? Uh, shout out to my, my mommy boys out there. You no, know, my AZ Warrior boys out there. And just be there this Saturday, right? This Saturday, guys. This Saturday, be there. Yep. Hey, let's pack the house. Let's let's get the community involved. Let's show them that we're you know we we got our our student athletes. We have their backs, um, and we're supporting the mission that they're on, trying to get you know the exposure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you guys next time. We'll see you Saturday.